Hey, what's up guys? It's been a while since I've done a hard ops and box cutter pure tutorial, so that's going to be what I'm going to cover in this video. So, hard ops and box cutter, especially if you're a new user, can be pretty overwhelming. I remember when I first started with these tools, I was watching uh, Master Xeon's videos, which were like three hours long, like multiple times over, just to kind of grasp the tools. There weren't that many resources out there for what I needed, and that's kind of what I aim to achieve, you know, partially with my channel um, when I show these tools, is just to make it more understandable and easy. So I really love making these new tutorials. So here's going to be another one. By the way, we've also added our hard ops and box cutter hotkey guide to our website. So if you want to download that for free and use it as a reference, feel free to get it. Link in the top of the description. We're going to make this interesting looking shape here. Now recently I've been thinking, I don't want to spend too much time talking, but I've begun to realize that it is so much more powerful if you learn to just kind of model your own shapes as opposed to copying things that already exist. The difference is if you copy, let's say, you learn how to model an iPhone, for example. If you just copy that from a picture, you're not initiating that creative part of your brain that gets you thinking in terms of visual design. But if you start tracing out your own shapes and playing with shapes, you really begin to kind of develop this intuition and see these shapes that look interesting and appealing. So I really recommend you guys, when you start using these tools, if you're learning the tools, you can copy stuff, that's fine, but you're gonna get so much more out of learning the tools by also trying to develop your own cool looking shapes. That's what we're, we're, excuse me, what we're gonna be doing in this video here, so let's get started. Now the first thing I like to do before I get started with anything is I like to take these settings that I have set up here. Most of these are default, some of them have customized. Um, don't worry about what they do, just copy them. It basically just kind of has like this custom pie menu set up. Like there's a few different pie menus here when you go through it. So just copy these settings I have under input. Okay, you can pause the video. And also under display, um, I use simple pie, or I turn off simple pie, sorry, because if I turn this on, it, um, it uses this different pie menu when you press Control D. Don't worry about it, just copy the exact settings I have here and you should be good to go. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to just kind of trace out a, a shape here. So generally what I do when I'm starting these models is I like to just kind of start with a very simple block out. You don't need anything crazy. You don't need to have any sort of, you know, elegant looking shape off the bat. Just kind of trace out something that might look somewhat visually appealing, right? So what I'm going to do, do something like that, okay? Looks like a decent size. We're going to press Control A and apply the scale. What this will do is make sure when we bevel, it's not biased to one side. So if I press Control A to apply the scale, it'll be a uniform bevel. Cool. All right, so the first thing I want to do is drop in a few loop cuts here. So we're going to press Control R, drop in a loop cut, and then right click, and then Control B and scroll up once to kind of make another loop cut here. You could also, there's another tool, you could also press Control shift and r which will basically offset an edge like that. It doesn't really matter. You can just press Control b and scroll up if you prefer it that way. So I'm going to go to right about here. I think that should be fine. And then what I want to do is take these faces here and kind of elevate them just a little bit. I also just noticed we got some duplicate vertices. I think it's from that Control shift r command. So what I can do is just select everything, press M merge by distance. I don't really know why that happened, but I'm going to take these two faces and move them up just a tad bit, maybe to here. Okay. And I'm also going to take these faces here on the bottom, just holding shift and clicking and pull this up here a little bit. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to take these two edges here in edge mode. We'll press control B and I'm just going to use one single segment. All right. Now let's make sure our scale is applied, which I think it is. Okay. So we're going to press control B and we're going to kind of get this interesting looking effect here. Let's make this a fairly large bevel. Okay. And then what I can do in object mode is I can press alt X and I could use a mirror or I could also use a symmetry. Now the difference is pretty uh, minuscule, but I'll show you if I press alt X and this is set to modifier, which basically just means a simple mirror modifier and I mirror it you're going to see we have a mirror modifier which is live in the stack. Now if I apply this, this would be the same effect as using symmetry. 
So if you just want to do that, um, you know, do it in one step instead of having to mirror and then apply the mirror, what you can do instead, I'll undo this, is you can use a symmetry. So Alt X, change this to symmetry, and you can do that. Pretty cool. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to kind of make this shape look a bit softer. This is a really cool way to make your hard surface meshes more visually appealing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alt click on this edge right here and press control B. And we're just going to give this maybe four segments or so. We don't have to go super high. And then what you can do, um, I use mesh machine, by the way, which has a symmetrize feature in edit mode. If you don't have mesh machine, you can just go back into object mode. Alt X and then symmetrize again and do it that way. You're going to notice these edges are kind of jagged right here. Now the way we fix that in hard ops is we press Q and then sharpen it which will basically smooth out this mesh but you're going to see it kind of caused some problems and that's because we need to adjust this auto smooth angle right here and we can do it directly in this little menu down here or what we can do is press Q and then shift click on sharpen which will allow us to kind of move left and right and just find that good spot in terms of the angle and you're going to see right down here on the bottom around 43 degrees seems to catch all those edges like I want. So now we're only smoothing out over those um, edges that we want to have smoothed out so now we kind of have this soft looking shape. Now I also want to do the same thing over here. Now there's one thing worth pointing out I see this issue a lot so if you press Control tilde, this will open up the Hops Helper menu. And you're going to see we have a few sharp options here. Now in Blender, sharps can be confusing because there's two different ways to refer to sharps. The first way is to literally press Control e and use a sharp. In terms of hard ops, we have four different types of sharps. So when I refer to sharp, I refer to one of the four different types here, which is either crease, seam, sharp, and B weight. We don't need a crease since we're not working with sub D, and we don't need a seam since we're not unwrapping. So usually what I do is I just keep apply sharp and apply B weight turned on. Those always seem to be the ones I use the most. Now bevel weight we only need if we're using a bevel set to weight. In this video we're just going to be using angle, so this one doesn't matter too much whether it's on or off. Anyway, so these two turned on. If I anytime I sharpen this with the Q menu. Not only does it smooth out the object, it also applies the B weight and the sharp to all these um, sharp edges here, as you can see. Now the issue with this is if I try to bevel this edge here, for example, you're going to see it kind of bevels out those sharp edges as well. And if I go into object mode, we're going to kind of have this very sharp edge across the mesh. So what I like to do before I bevel like that is I press Q and then unmark it. And now if I bevel it, we won't actually have that sharp there. It's going to be a lot smoother. See that? So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So now what I want to do is press Alt X and then just symmetrize the other side. Really easy. So already you can kind of see we have this visually appealing looking shape. And this is what I mean. Just kind of play with your own shapes, play with different effects, and you'll end up getting a decent aesthetic and style for yourself. Now what I want to do is I want to go to front view. So we can just press 1 on the numpad or tilde doesn't matter and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to maybe let's try going to these edges down here we'll unmark them and then maybe bevel them we can scroll up and make a few more segments so it's more round that could be a pretty cool shape not sure I'll keep that but so far so good I kind of like the aesthetic of that so now what I want to do is maybe let's see maybe I could go here and control click on this area and bevel this one so before we do that, let's unmark that edge and then control B. Maybe we can give it like a nice big bevel right here. That looks kind of cool. Maybe that's a bit too big. We could go here instead. If you undo it, make sure you unmark it again because it'll undo what you did. That could be pretty cool. Maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go right here. That looks pretty cool. And then, of course, if you want to symmetrize it to the other side, you just press Alt-X and then Symmetry. One other thing, by the way, if you ever want to mirror or symmetrize or whatever, and you want to switch between one of these menus here, you can also just press the D key, which will kind of give you a few different options here. This is kind of advanced. Generally, I just go up here and I choose Modifier or Symmetry, depending on what I'm doing. So if you're a beginner in these tools, literally, like 99% of the time, you're going to be using Modifier and Symmetry, so don't stress about it. 
Cool, so already this is looking a lot more interesting. All right, so now what we could do is maybe kind of play with the shape here. So sometimes what I like to do is just um, play with the mirror a bit. So maybe what I could do is press Alt-X, change this to, um, or I could try symmetrizing it. And you're going to see when I symmetrize, it actually symmetrized over this origin point, which is down here. I want to symmetrize over the center. So what I'm going to do is right click and set the origin to the geometry. And you're going to see it's kind of centered, but not really. It's almost centered. The center is like around here somewhere. So I'm going to right click origin to geometry and then change this to bound center instead. What this will do is create an invisible like bounding box and then put the origin in the middle of that. So now if I were to symmetrize this, it'll symmetrize directly down the center. Now we kind of have this cool looking shape here. Now to me, it's a little bit too thin. There's not much space here in the middle. These bevels are almost touching. So what I think I might do is I might take this bottom portion here. You can just go into edit mode and then press Z to go into wireframe and then B to box select this portion here. Maybe we could pull this down just a little bit like that. And now we could try symmetrizing again. So Alt X and then symmetry. And let's make sure we reset that origin point again. Bound center. We could try symmetrizing that. And now we have a little bit more space here. We almost have a bit too much in this one, but it's it's not too bad. Perhaps we could move this up just a bit more. Reset the origin point again and then symmetrize. And now we kind of have this um, a little bit more space here so the bevels aren't that close. Cool, so, so far so good. And I don't think I mentioned it yet, but sometimes people ask me, how do you get this nice edge highlight? You just go in here and turn on cavity. That's how you do it. It looks a bit nicer. You can turn on shadow as well. Um, but Blender's shadow option, um, if you have a lot of geometry, really slows down your machine. Even if you have like the highest tier machine, it's simply a Blender limitation. So I don't use shadow because sometimes it tends to lag. Cool. So this is looking pretty good. Maybe what we could do is we could press, uh, go into edit mode, press control R. Now we can't actually add a loop through here because the loops will not pass through n-gons like this. So maybe what we could do is we could just use the knife tool or we could take this edge that's already in the center and just move it on the y-axis up here, kind of like that. And then maybe what I'll do is control B to bevel it, just give it one segment, okay? And then we can press E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S to kind of scale in. You can also do this in hard ops by simply pressing Q and then Alt clicking on EM macro. Then it'll kind of pull it in, it does the same thing basically. Cool, and sometimes, um, oh, that's that's not the cavity issue. I just realized we don't have bevel on here. What I always like to do is add a very, very small holding bevel to kind of make the edges pop a bit more. So I'm just going to press Q, bevel, and if for some reason the bevel isn't catching on these edges here, you might have to press the A key and then adjust your angle until you catch them, kind of like that. Cool, so now we kind of have a bit more of a separation here on this area. And then maybe what we could do is we could Alt-click this edge, and then Alt-Shift-click this edge, and then scale it a bit on the y-axis. Kind of make a bit more of a visually appealing type of you know shape there. Kind of cool. And then maybe what we could do is we could press the D key and change, um, well, I guess we're already on the box tool, but if you wanted to change like a circle, you could cut with a circle. We haven't done any cuts yet, so let's just choose the box tool, okay? And then just click and maybe make like a little notch right here. And then press Alt X to, we can't symmetrize in this case. If we symmetrize, nothing will happen. Reason being is because this Boolean right here is not technically real. Symmetrize only works on real geometry. This is not real geometry yet unless we apply that Boolean. Then symmetry would actually work. But if you have a live Boolean, meaning it's not real geometry yet, you would simply just use a mirror instead, okay? You could do that, and then you'll kind of have this nice effect. Now, the nice thing about non-destructive Booleans is we can press Q and go to ever scroll and just kind of scroll between our Booleans. Now, I could just basically grab this and kind of move it over, right? Pretty cool. You're also going to notice we kind of have this pool right here. And the way you fix that is by simply going to the bevel modifier and under geometry, turn off the loop slide feature. 
that'll fix it. Cool. Alright, so now we kind of have this cool looking shape here. It only took a few minutes and obviously if I wasn't making a tutorial, you could probably make this in like a minute or two at most. Awesome, so, so far so good. Now what we could do is maybe make a little bit more visual interest here. Let me go to the bottom of this piece and tab into edge mode. What I think I'm going to do, I was kind of playing with this a bit off camera and I found that maybe if we chamfer this right here, so we'll control click around and we press control B, we can make like a chamfer here. Now remember, we already have some sharp markings right here. We're just going to press Q and unmark them so we have a cleaner shading. And I'm just going to control B and just give this a one segment bevel and kind of get that effect. Now you're going to see it kind of stops the beveling right here. That probably means the angle is not catching with our bevel modifier. Right now the angle is 43 degrees. So what we could do is just adjust it. Just kind of pull that down. Alternatively, what we could do is press Q, bevel, and then press the A key and kind of move our mouse to the right and do it does the same thing basically, just a bit quicker. And now you're gonna see all those edges that we want to have caught were caught. Awesome, so this is looking pretty cool. I do want to point out, I don't know if you can see it with YouTube's compression, so I'll just turn on a matte cap real quick. Notice we kind of have this shading stretch right here. Try to find a better angle. See that right about there? If you ever get one of these, make sure that your bevel modifier has a hard and normals turned on. And to do that in um, hard ops, you press control tilde and make sure HN is turned on. That means every single time you run a bevel, hard and normals will be applied by default. So if yours are turned off, just turn them on here in the bevel modifier. Cool, but you're gonna see it still doesn't fix the issue. So in this case, what I do instead is I turn off hard and normals and I use a weighted normal modifier instead, and that tends to fix the issue. Cool. So, so far, so good. Pretty interesting looking shape here. All right, now what I think I'm gonna do is make a, um, make like a little kind of case around this thing. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna press the D key, make sure we're in box cutter mode. And if I click from here and then here, maybe go like that, and then I release my mouse and cut through, you're gonna see it actually runs a Boolean cut. I could also use other cuts by pressing the X key and swap between like a slice and an intersect and an inset Boolean. But in this case, I'm just gonna press the K key to run a knife. Now if I go into edit mode, you're gonna see we kind of have this knife cut that went through right here. What this means is I can simply go into face mode. So tab into face mode, alt click these faces here, and then check this out. In hard ops, if you press Q and shift click on curve extract, it will take those faces, separate them, and then solidify them. Isn't that pretty cool? So we could go right to about here maybe. For some reason, curve extract turns off the cavity feature. So I'm just gonna turn that back on. And we kind of have this nice looking little case here. Maybe we could drop like a small little bevel on it. Just press Q and then bevel. For some reason it's not working, so let me maybe remove this bevel and then just add a new one like that. Okay. And then maybe what we could do is we could cut through here. And this time let's press the X key twice until we get to the slice operation. Now we kind of have like a cool looking little thing here on the front. And finally, what I think I'm going to do, I'm not sure how it'll look. I'm going to try pressing D and go into this N-Gon cutter here. And then uh, make sure you turn off knife, by the way, if that's still turned on. And maybe what I can do is kind of cut through here and make like a shape like that. Honestly, I don't really like the look of that. I'm just going to undo it and just kind of leave it as is. Cool. So we could maybe cut it like that. That could actually be a decent shape. And then what I want to do is I want to apply all these uh, booleans and stuff on here. So I'm just going to press Q, operations, and then smart apply. And that'll, that'll basically apply everything except for the bevel modifier. Cool. And then maybe I could just go in here and chamfer this edge. Looks kind of cool, right? Just some different ideas. Maybe pull this back just a little bit. Nah, I'll just leave it where it was. Okay, now check this out. There's just two more things I want to show you that are pretty interesting tools. Um, so what if I wanted to make a hole in the bottom of this thing? Well, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to press C for circle select. 
I'm going to paint this flat surface because notice this whole portion right here is completely flat. See that? So we could just press the F key to fill that into one single end gun. Now what I could do is I could press the I key to inset and then extrude this back and kind of make a shape like that. If you wanted to do that more non-destructively, meaning you're not affecting the actual geometry of the mesh, what you could do instead, this is a really cool trick, I want to make sure you understand this. If I press, um, if I go to object mode and I press Q and shift click on smart apply, what this will do is it will duplicate the mesh and on that duplicate it will apply every single modifier except your bevel modifier. So check this out. Now I have a complete duplicate with all the booleans applied and what I could do is I could steal the geometry from this duplicate. So check this out. If I steal this face right here, let's uh, press Control i to invert the selection and then just delete it. We can just press X and then delete faces. Now I'm left with this single little piece right here. So if I were to maybe inset this, right, and then invert the selection again with Control i now what I have is a piece here that I can use as a Boolean. Isn't that cool? So if I extrude this through, let's um, extrude that all the way through, and then just run a simple difference boolean, select here, and shift click here, Q, booleans, and then difference. Check this out. Now we kind of have this cool looking shape here, which is completely customizable. We can always turn this off or on. So maybe what I'll do at this point is make a small little bevel on these edges as well, just so it's a bit more round, right? Cool. I just wanted to show you that because it's a pretty cool way to make a more non-destructive effect of what you would have otherwise done destructively. So I think that's enough for this video. I showed you most of the essential tools here. I know some of it can get a bit complex, but hopefully I explained it in such a way that makes sense to you. If the video helped, drop me a like. It does help people find my video, which is just going to help grow the hard surface community. So I'd always appreciate a thumbs up. Helps me out a lot. And also check out some of the free guides over on our website. Um, they're pretty useful. Some are related to modeling, some are related to design, but overall I think they'll be a great resource to your Blender endeavors as well. I'll link that in the top of the description too. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.